they are not well received even by their own party most of the time it, it's actually pathetic as fuck but we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna look at this clip it's rhetoric is important and perceptions are important and as we've started to talk about in the past couple of weeks the fact that biden is actually doing a few things has really changed not just the way that we feel about this term but what's possible going forward it's making us sort of reevaluate what might be done and it's producing a little bit of fun online let's go to the last video and you'll see an example of what i'm talking about is this unfair to people who paid their student loans or chose not to take out loans <laughs> <laughs> I wish you could see it when it did it like when the when the when it the sound effect and digital bullshit it zoomed into his face and the screen glitched and he shot lasers out of his eye. You are terminated. <laughs> terminated. How dare you ask me such a relevant question? <laughs> We do not own the multi-billion dollar businesses that I see why these guys get them all attacked from. Is that fair? What do you think? <sighs> I like how they I like how they did the shade drop onto his face like that like that's some kind of gotcha. Like, oh man, boy, golly gee, Biden, yeah, you really hit us with that talking point. It's just so fucking poignant, man. Good job. You right. remember the talking point that you guys have been writing for the last fifty fucking years. Good job, Biden. Yeah. Even yeah, though it man. didn't completely make sense in context to the situation. So right. I'm, I'm gonna uh I'm gonna look like I'm contributing now, and like I'm joking, but legit, hundred percent seriously, didn't actually understand what he said. <laughs> uh. That's not surprising. So basically, to reiterate, uh, to reiterate his point much more articulately, because he's not articulate, never has been, and he's never had yeah. a stutter either. You lying pieces of shit. What he said was. Is it fair to people with student loans that corporate America gets multi-billion dollar tax breaks, multi-million dollar tax breaks? And the, the Democrats yeah. have been writing that talking point literally since before I've been alive. And, and in reply it, to what, what was her question? The, the question was, is it fair to the American taxpayer that you're forgiving student loan debt, which everyone is going to have to pay for because it's coming out of tax money? Right. OK. Well, right. yeah. I mean, regardless of any opinion that I might have on that, which I don't currently, because I'd have to go and think about it, two things can be unfair. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, yeah. one thing being unfair doesn't make the other thing fair. They they can both be unfair, and you could still have good points. So Exactly. Yeah. The left lives on whataboutisms. It's like, you point out something that they're doing that's fucked up, and they're like, well, what about this thing you guys did? No, 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 no. I didn't ask mm -hmm. about the thing we did. I yeah. said, what about this thing you guys are doing? And they always want to deflect and change the subject. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, I think I see people sort of on maybe on the right. I don't understand. I'm not sure, but who would who would do the same thing? Like, I've seen quite a lot over here with, with um, so I don't know if you know about all the the rail strikes and stuff that are going on. Rail um, strike. Yeah, because um, yeah, all the all the rail workers, or a lot of them, are Thank going you. on strike because they're trying to get um, you know, actual better conditions and, and more pay and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, for, and and I don't understand all the intricacies of it because it's very it's, it's all very complicated. But I see it all the time with people saying like, well. Uh, if if you go on strike and you get more money, how is it fair that you get paid this much and then a doctor would get paid this much? And uh, and it's always just like, well, no, because the doctors should just get paid more too. I <laughs> uh, see. So I, I I I agree with some of what you just said, and I disagree with some of it. So so I believe that um, workers have a right to organize and cooperatively demand better conditions or compensation from their companies. I believe that workers have a right to do that. I believe unions uh, have way too much power in my country, but it might, it probably works differently over there. Um, that's, that's a, a separate tangent to get on, but I believe uh, people have the right to get together and collectively bargain. I believe that's a fundamental right. However, uh, you can't just say, well, if these people get more money, well, then these people should get more money too, uh, because in any functional economic system, people are paid according to the value 
that they are actually contributing to society. And when you actually look at the the net benefit of a railroad worker and a doctor to the overall function of society, I think there's actually an argument to be made that they're pretty close together, actually, when you really think about it. I I agree with everything you just said. However, I do think you misunderstood my point uh, because what I was saying was it's like it it shouldn't it doesn't have to be one or the other anyway. Like it, regardless of what the train driver gets paid, they can want to get paid more without thinking, oh well, we need to be paid more than uh, than doctors. Like Mm -hmm. it's possible to for for like say this rail worker to want his pay to be better, but also think that it would be right for doctors to get paid more too. It's not like one fighting Mm -hmm. for their rights is saying, well, fuck all these other people. Yes. I, I agree with that. And uh, that's, that's a common problem with, uh, with humans, but especially with humans who don't understand economics. This is an issue of understanding how a capitalist economy actually works. A lot of people think that wealth is a zero-sum game. So they think there's 10 pieces of pie, and if that person gets two pieces of pie, then there's only going to be enough left for me to get one piece of pie because there's all these other people. They think there's a a limited amount of pie. Mm -hmm. That is not how a capitalist economy actually works. Capitalist economies have the unique ability, that's the unique function of capitalism, that they can create wealth. They actually increase the amount of resources to go around. So over time, because of the efficiency of distributed labor and decentralized uh, management of economic resources, people optimize the creation of wealth through the optimization of labor. This is the founding principle of what makes capitalism so great. And so eventually there's two pies and then there's three and then there's four. So anyone who thinks, well, if this person's getting more money then I'm going to get less, they just don't understand economics at all. That's not how it works. It's not a zero sum game. If we all work together and we all do everything we can to make society as functional as possible, more pies get baked. Right. Yeah. Because it's more about you getting out there and actually learning how to make your own pie. Right. So. Yeah. I, I think it's funny that that's the closest that I've ever come to understanding someone explaining that to me. And it's because you explained it in food metaphors. <laughs> <laughs> it really works. I yeah. mean, listen. When you take it just explained it to me like that at school. <laughs> I Because... Right. Of- don't even understand it i mean and look that's it that and look that really is a gross simplification but at Mm -hmm. its core principle that's the thing Mm -hmm. it really is that's that that's the two different worldviews especially like left-wing economics economists Mm -hmm. socialist types they think there's a limited amount of pie we have to make sure the government makes sure everyone gets a piece of the pie because there's a limited amount capitalists recognize that no, you can literally use human labor to create pie out of thin fucking air. Be, yeah. and, there, and the proof of that is the American economy. <laughs> yeah. We took a largely undeveloped piece of land, that, and regardless of what you think about who we took it from and how we treated them, that argument aside, we took an undeveloped piece of land and in 200 years made it the superpower the world has never known. So, yes, it is possible to just create wealth from nothing except sweat and grease. Yeah. And actually, there's a, a market for sweat and grease itself. And if you come to buy my, <laughs> buy my sweat and grease dot com, <laughs> we'll ship, it will ship you a sweaty, greasy rag right to your door. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Is that the company where you can also donate fat like you donate plasma? Oh, uh, God. No, I think that's my cousin's company. <laughs> fat for cash. <laughs> no, it should have been fat stacks. God damn it. There you, there you go. <laughs> uh, oh, that's too good. I can't believe I missed that the first time around. <laughs> <laughs> <Not dumb. laughs> 
<laughs> Need to Prince of Persia my way back. Ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was actually a pretty good game. I loved that game. I never got to. Uh, I never got to finish it, but I got to. It was like at a friend's house. I got to pick it up for a few minutes. I, I never got to like actually get myself a copy and finish it though. But anyway, I, I have a troubled relationship with it because uh, a couple of years back we bought it. Uh, I bought the original Sons of Time game and mm-hmm. uh, tried to play it on my Xbox, and it killed my 360. <gasps> it just. It just comp- we d- I did everything that I needed to do yeah. to play like the backwards compatibility and all that lot, but it, yeah. j- it just killed my my 360. Oh no! <laughs> Damn! <laughs> I was like, oh, and I loved that game, and now I have to hate it. It's for me that haven't already been ruined. They will soon be ruined by bad people, but for now, it is. <laughs> fun. See, this is by bad people. So, uh, yeah, oh, what, we, what, what was that? I didn't even catch that. I was taking a drink. Uh, they, okay, so this is what he said. What do you think? Okay, so look, uh, if if the memes haven't already been ruined, they will soon be ruined by bad people. But he just casually refers to people who disagree with him as bad people. Mm, I, I <laughs> think there's a little bit of pot calling the kettle black there, <laughs> Mister hey. Inflammatory. <laughs> That's that's a fair point from you, sir. But I would point out that uh, they started it, and I'm not. <laughs> and I know that sounds like a five year old at recess, but listen, it's true. The left has been slinging shit at me my whole fucking life. It's only been the last five or six years where I've been. You know what? No, I'm done. They're assholes. <laughs> I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> <laughs> It is fun, and behind the memes is a truth. More more important than just the irony that led to Dark Bread in the first place. Now it's, well, maybe he could keep this going. Maybe if he gets a taste of people actually thinking that he's tough, that he can accomplish something, maybe that will inspire him <laughs> forward. You know what? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm probably okay if he doesn't. I Maybe I'm alone here, but I don't think I want the sort of leader regardless of a prime minister or a president who leans into internet memes i think i'm okay without that oh see that's not the aspect of it that i give a fuck about my like what this guy just said the the part that troubles me is now that he's gotten a taste of people thinking he's tough it's like so he needed he needed the uh fake bravado provided him by the media industrial complex to gain enough (laughs) confidence to be a leader that's not right. someone who should have power. Yeah. It's like, also, this is not, you know, people thinking he's tough because him coming out and doing that was the least tough thing he could have done. It was like right. him standing up there and being like, you know, opening his robes and being like, look, everyone, I have no balls. And then turning around and saying, they also removed my spine for good measure. <laughs> right. I love how even when we kind of agree, we still disagree. Like, I love how we basically agree that what he's encouraging the president to be there isn't the kind of leader that we'd want, but we disagree on on (laughs) the mechanics of that. Like, I'm like, no, I don't think I want someone running my country who's like, this is my economic policy, and then, like, does a farting noise under their armpit and then, like, (laughs) cracks out like... (laughs) a meme that they've seen on Facebook, like, I don't want that. And you're what? like, well, well, no, I don't want someone in charge that needs false bravado. <laughs> and right. it, just, it just entertains me that even when we kind of agree, yeah. it's for different reasons. Well, let me, let me, let me try to persuade you over to my side of this a little bit, Mason. So oh, I you think can try. I think I'll try. Let, I want you to understand the reason I don't care about the memes. Because... A sense of humor is a quality you want your leader to have. First of all, because if you can laugh with your leader, you can identify with him. And that's important. That's Mm -hmm. important for trust between the leader and and the follower. That's important to know that that person is human. They don't take themselves or life too seriously, which is a trademark of all the dictators. They think they're larger than life. They think they're godlike figures. The only thing they're willing to laugh at is the suffering of their enemies. 
And especially if they're willing to laugh at memes uh, of themselves or a situation they're involved in, it shows that they have at least a degree of humility, which is, again, something that's profoundly important in anyone you trust to lead you. So you want someone who is willing to laugh at a meme or share a meme to be your leader. You really do. No, you raise a good point. But then all I get in my head is is flashes of that weekend when Boris said that he spent the weekend at Peppa Pigland. And, uh, <laughs> and, and I'm just like, right. <laughs> well, no, you raise a good point, though, as much as I'm joking. Oh, shit. Fuck. What the fuck? What's going I'm on? I'm sorry. My fucking my my fucking computer just accident. I not accidentally. I just fucking uh, I accidentally clicked on a game earlier when I was booting up all my software, and I canceled it. But my computer just randomly decided, "Hey, that boot that that boot up that you canceled, I'm just gonna finish it for you." Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey Zach, happened? you forgot about your sandwich, so I ate it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, it, just, it was I'm funny pretty... because when the music was going off and you're like, shit, fuck, what the fuck? What's going on? That's basically me during adverts when there's no <laughs> dialogue. <laughs> <sighs> I'll think about like, in three months, are we going to even remember that this happened? Is it going to feel totally unearned? Or is he going to find other small things that he can occasionally dole out to keep the sense of enthusiasm or optimism going? Yeah, no. Uh, the fact that I think anyone is optimistic or enthused by Dark Brandon, by, by P.O. Hitler, <laughs> absolutely hilarious. It's like, and look at Caitlin. I wish, yeah. Mason, you could see this. But Caitlin, just for, for my sighted, sighted co-host here, doesn't that guy just have the most punchable face? Uh, both of them do, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I the the fact the fact that he's like, yeah, there's all these weird memes being made about how evil this guy is, and he's trying to play that like that's a good thing is slightly weird right. to me. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, and, yeah. And the smug look he has about it, like, haha, I just made a good point. Everyone smell that fart I just laid out, isn't it? <laughs> right. He's like, look, I enjoy the smell of my own farts. I really do. Mm. God damn it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I just, yeah. Like, just look, I'm so edgy and cool. Mom, look at me. Uh, oh, man, I'm so cool. I'm taking guys. the unpopular side here. Isn't this what Robert Frost meant? Well, it's not even that he's... It's not even that he's taking the unpopular side, Caitlin. He's shilling for the most unpopular politician in our nation's history. That's what he's doing. He's trying to convince us that Joe Biden has any relatability, is likable in any sense, and isn't just a corrupt pedo. And yeah. I, I'm so disgusted by that, I literally don't have words for it. Yeah. Honestly... Well, Go on, you can you can go, Kate. Sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say it's basically it it's like him standing up there and being like, "Okay, when you guys take over, kill me last, okay? Right. Kill me last. <laughs> kill me last. I'll dance the good dance for you." Right. <laughs> Mason, what were you gonna say? Well, I mean, I think it's the only comment that I have to make on Biden, and I think this is probably a fairly damning comment, or at least you guys will take it as. I don't actually have an opinion on him. And that's just because mm -hmm. um, I haven't heard anything about him. Mm -hmm. Like, it just, he hasn't felt like, since he started being president, he hasn't felt like any sort of presence. Never see anything about him online. Where, regardless of whatever I think about Trump, which isn't relevant to this point, mm -hmm. I heard about him, saw what he was doing, saw what he was saying, mm -hmm. actually had. Um, you know, a personality. Yeah, and I, and, I, and I just seriously, I, I'm, I'm not trying to say it with any sort of connotations. I just don't really know anything about Biden, and I think that's a fairly um, 
you know, it's a fair point on its own, probably. Right. Yeah, it speaks for itself. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It speaks for itself. You're absolutely right, Mason. The fact that you've never heard enough about Mason, or not about Biden, to <laughs> yeah, yourself, to form a fucking opinion on him, that does speak for itself. It's like the guy is so low energy and so low presence outside of how much he's fucking up my country it's like he doesn't exist. It's like he doesn't matter, except it actually does because the ways he's fucking up my country is having far reaching implications for the world. But yeah. the reason you haven't heard about that is because the global media all runs left. It's at least in Western countries right now. And it is just absolutely insane. How many people are willing to just ignore how bad he's fucking things up because he's on their team. And I, and I literally can't even fight you on whether you're right or wrong at that point because I haven't heard anything about it. Right. So, first right. of all, I love that clip. That's my favorite Biden clip of all time. If we had that Biden... Chick absolutely loves the smell of his own farts. <laughs> yes. And that's... And, Mason, so you're clear, that's not a racial slur. That's his name. It's I believe it's pronounced Chink Uyghur. So that so we're clear. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, you you kind of technically made really? it worse with that because I wouldn't have even thought of that. <laughs> he just pointed out an elephant in the room that I didn't even know was there. <laughs> Is it because you're blind? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I'd be much more enthused, right? Uh, but he doesn't really mean it. Uh, he'll go back to giving multi billion now uh, billionaires tax cuts and tax oh deals and loopholes. Uh, after well, at least there's a little bit of self-awareness right there. For the midterms. I'm just keeping it real. Okay. So now, on the other hand, John's right. Like when he's tough and it works and he goes up in the It doesn't uh, work. No one believes it. That, that was not tough. Because every politician wants to be popular, yeah. needs to be popular in order to win, et cetera. When he uh, did the student debt relief and uh, they were super nervous about that. And, and they should be super nervous about it because it's profoundly unpopular because my my grandchildren should not be paying off a government debt for people that went and got useless gender studies degrees. Right. Yeah. I mean, like, okay, you got, you know, underwater basket weaving as a degree. <laughs> underwater feminist basket weaving. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, 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 um, I mean, I don't know if I think writing off the debt completely is the right thing to do and obviously i'm not commenting on your country but over here i wish it was um a bit easier to like access education like the student loans are fairly um you know they're fairly expensive and it's mm -hmm. just like it's just a shame that it's such a barrier to that level of education for so many people mm -hmm. Now, I, I agree with you, and here's my proposed fix, because I'm not just a person who whines and bitches. I, here's a viable solution that will drive costs down, make a, education affordable for Americans. End government loans, because the reason that college prices have skyrocketed yeah. since the 70s is because government loans came into existence, and they are uncancelable by bankruptcy, which means you have to pay them back no matter mm -hmm. what. It's always there. You can't get them can't, until now. And they, you can basically always get them, even if you're completely unqualified by, by uh, economic standards, uh, know that no lending institution would give you the mm -hmm. money, but the government will. So they're predatory yeah. in that sense. And yeah. the government will give a loan to fucking anyone. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're someone who should actually be going to college or not because you have zero aptitude for classroom learning or what it, they'll just give you a fucking loan. So government loan, the government shouldn't be in the business of giving money out to people or businesses. I've been saying that for a long time. No government money to any private party ever for any reason. The only way I'm comfortable with the government giving out any kind of financial backing is tax breaks. That's yeah. it. Okay. All right. That part is done. Now, in the private business side, you put a cap on the interest rate you can charge on student loans so to you go to the banks you go to any and any lending institution you say you can only charge 0.5 percent interest or 0.1 or whatever we could agree on that would be not an undue burden on the person 
but would still allow the institution to make money and therefore continue to run a business. You can only charge so much interest on student loans. And that way the loans would be affordable. The government wouldn't be subsidizing the financial or the, uh, the higher learning institutions. So they would then have to drop their prices back down to uh, a rate that is actually concurrent with the rest of the economy and the entire market would settle out. And suddenly education would be both affordable and meaningful again, because not everyone would be going to college just because. Yeah. Plus, they could go back to doing um, things like what they used to do with having fundraisers for grants and scholarships and stuff mm -hmm. that were privatized. Right. What yeah, I, I can't really speak on that as England and America are so different in that mm -hmm. sense. So, Right. But, I, but I, you can probably at least see the logic of my argument, right? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, you just speak in a language that it just uh, I I have to fight the the like zone out filter for that sort of thing. <laughs> like I I'm, I don't really don't mean that disrespectfully. I, no, I was I genuinely trying to listen, but I, I was just fighting that filter that was installed by school of like this person's talking about something you don't understand. So why even bother listening? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, know. I listen, Mason. We're men. I, I, you're speaking my language, bro. <laughs> I have the same filter. <laughs> I know. As we predicted, it worked. It's made them more popular. And they're like, whoa! That is all. I, I love that that's the, his noise for popular. <laughs> he, looks right. like, he looks at Twitter in the morning, sees that he's got seven mentions, and he's like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love that Mason knows nothing about this, but he still accurately guessed the number of mentions he wakes up to. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, fuck it, eh? But yeah, it, it really is. It's my thing. It's like, dude, it didn't make you guys more popular. First of all, the polling is controlled by, you guessed it, people on your side of the aisle. I don't believe that it's accurate for one fucking second. And it only made you more popular among people with college debt. Everyone else fucking hates it as a whole. Like, even Democrats are out there saying, this is a terrible fucking idea. Why are you doing this to us? It's only people with college debt. That, is, that isn't that everyone though? <laughs> no, not even I, close. I know, I'm kidding. Okay, so those <laughs> things do matter and they care about it, but at the end of the day, John, if we're being honest, and that's what we do on DYD, uh, <laughs> after the well, when, you, when you have oh, to wow. say how honest you are, it's the uh, it kind of I, I know nothing <laughs> about these people, right? <laughs> so this is totally impartial, but when you have to say I'm always honest, it means you're never honest. Right. Yeah. Well, rarely ever. <laughs> Most. Yeah. What I love about that is they've been caught in so many lies. Like there is video after video after video on YouTube catching them in lie after lie after lie after lie. It's not even hard to find. It. And this guy on screen right now denies the Armenian genocide happened. How much more of a dishonest piece of shit can you be? <laughs> hey, Zach, uh, tell what? me your deepest, darkest secret. You can trust me. I'm I'm always trustworthy. <laughs> <laughs> tell me your secret, are you? <laughs> uh, when he goes to do the rest of his so-called agenda, if they keep the house in the so-called agenda, uh, which you're still big in. Well, I um, have a problem with this agenda <laughs> word that goes around all of, like doesn't. But by definition, doesn't a politician have an agenda? Yes. Like, just by definition. Yes. They have an agenda. All of them yeah. do. Mm hmm Right, okay. Because people say Absolutely. agenda as if it's, like, something that's, like, you're just pushing your agenda. And it's like, well, yes. That's kind of yeah. like whoever's like, job it is. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, 
that's something people don't understand. You're just pushing your agenda. Yeah, like 99% of the people currently alive. Yeah. Your point? <laughs> like everyone has ulterior motives. Or just so, motives. Like there's some yeah. people who are tra- like I'm completely transparent about the things that motivate me. I'm motivated by uh, wanting to make people's lives better, uh, wanting a little bit of fame and wealth on the side, my friends, my loyalty to God, my loyalty to my country, uh, having a good time. These are some of my primary motivating factors in no particular order, mind you. If I was to order those, the order would be very different. But I'm very transparent about the things that motivate me and the things I'm working towards. Like, it, it's not wrong to have an agenda. No. <laughs> Your list is so much longer than mine. <laughs> <laughs> mine is mine is just having a comfortable quiet life and entertaining people those are my three things oh and food, yeah. Don't eh. food. Eh. i mean you entertaining people is on there and that's a worthwhile pursuit the world needs joy <laughs> no argument from me just a shame i'm not that good at it. <laughs> what it's just a shame i'm not that good at it <laughs> <laughs> what, what, living a quiet life or entertaining people <laughs> you decide <laughs> you're not, you're not, minimum wage you're not going to give people health care you're not going to lower drug prices and they'll give them millions and millions and millions of dollars to corporate democrats and biden uh and also biden and biden will uh not pass any of those things yeah i think biden leaning into the well i got it credit where credit's due i agree with everything you just said right there and in, the, in that quick quick clip of him being talking (laughs) dark brandon thing as an online strategy to get the youth vote out in the midterms and in 2024 for the dems is is smart right young people (laughs) have videos like that they're all over tiktok but i think somehow i don't think it is no no it's not yeah i mean unless you can and i I, i'm about to use inflammatory language unless you can re-weaponize it Uh and like completely transform the meme so that it's like uh like self-aware and like giving a big old wink to the audience which mm-hmm. seems like it'd probably be pretty hard to do then no no it's it's that's not going to be an effective strategy now yeah. yeah and and not only not only would it be hard to do but we know they can't do that because the left can't meme no they can't they can't it's, it's, they have to it's a cliche to say it at this point, but they just can't. When you look at a left-wing meme, it's just a shitty cartoon with a wall of text explaining this fucking thing that they want to hit you over the head with. And then you look at a right-wing meme, and it's like one sentence that cuts to the bone. And that's 99% of, like, yeah. Uh. Oh, really? Hello, citizen. Yeah. I'm the man. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but see, that's not a left wing or a right wing meme. That's just political satire. <laughs> <laughs> You're always got yeah. a fucking answer for everything. He's I do. I'm a politician. Man. <laughs> no, no, that's actually unfair because politicians don't have answers for anything, especially if the, if the answer should be yes or no. <laughs> oh my god! I could go on and touch Mason. You just yeah. fucking touched on something that has been a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> It's like politicians, it's like they're incapable of brevity. It's like they're completely yeah. incapable of of uh, being succinct. They are mm-hmm. completely unwilling to just say, yes, I agree with that, or no, I agree. They have to explain their position and explain their friend's position and thank their donors and thank their constituents and yeah. tell you how good their farts smell and talk about their favorite flavor of margarita and mention how they walked their dog yesterday and were thinking about the nature of government entities. And I just want to strangle them and say, answer the fucking question. It's me, it's, the explanation behind it is... Uh, it's a game that me and Lee call Sniper Watch. And it's mm-hmm. it's where you watch politicians give answers and uh, you see how close they get to yes or no because that's how close they come to death. Because as we all should know, every politician has a sniper on a building nearby and if they give a yes or no answer, they die. Yeah. <laughs> you just watch. It's time a politician gives a yes or no answer. They'll go missing in a few days. Right. Think think of the last politician you saw give a yes or no answer. But you don't know where they are today, do you? 
<laughs> Jason, I love how this is a bit, but it's also like actually kind of astute. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, I think part of the thing that it is is the fact that it's kind of like what they teach you to do in marketing, which is basically catch people in a word vortex. Of, yeah. You know, just like I'm just gonna pummel you with all these words so that I overwhelm your brain so that all you can do is just submit to what I'm trying to get you to do. Yep. Well, we'll just I'll just talk for so long that you won't even remember what your original question was. Right, yes, yeah. Right. In other news, this girl on screen right now that's a, a host for the Young Turks, very dashing woman. It's a shame she's evil. People are yeah. into the fact that the Democrats like, have been saying, Your beauty is wasted on something so stupid. N no comment about how I'm inflammatory, Mason. <laughs> I uh, well, I I can't I can't speak one way or the other on that, can I? So you, you might be being inflammatory, but you you could be being sarcastic for all I know. Or you could be telling the truth, or you could be just lying to try and trick me. There are all sorts of possibilities here, so I'm not really sure which one to go with. Well, I mean, listen, the part where she's very fetching was not uh, was not sarcasm or anything ingenuine. Like looking at her. Uh, my glands become inflamed. That I'll tell you that much. Like, <laughs> oh, lovely. Good things that a lot of young people agree with, but haven't been doing much. And so it's got to be paired with an effective online strategy of Biden calling out corruption and hypocrisy. And I really uh, like that in his speech he called out the, the filter as lying for power and for profit. The fact that he used the word profit is huge there. But he can't just call out corruption. He can't just say good things. He's got to also do things in tandem with that. Yeah. He's yeah. not just going to say things. He's also going to do things. Right. It's like, it's like, well, at least your face is pretty. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just, I'm John Bonner. And when I become the prime minister, I'm not just going to say things. I'm going to do things. <laughs> All right. What are you going to do? Tell us. Well, uh, the things that I'm going to do are as follows. But first, let me just tell you, I'm so thankful that all of you are here today. Isn't this a great... <laughs> <laughs> well, oh my to God. answer your question, sometimes I will say things, but I will also do things. <laughs> Well, what will you do? Well, what I'll do is see things, but I'll also do things at the same time. <laughs> like just this morning, I was talking to my wife about how I was going to do this rally today while I was making myself a cup of coffee. You see, I'm not like some other politicians that they have an assistant bring them their cup of coffee in the morning. I make my own cup of coffee because I'm just like you. A regular guy that lives in a twelve million dollar mansion, which I earned by giving speeches and taking behind closed doors money to create policies that fuck you up the ass. Vote for me. <laughs> Not that I make my own coffee because I'm afraid that someone's going to poison me. <laughs> <laughs> no, he went too far with it anyway, Zach. He said too much. It just it just needs to just be the endless circle of I'll say things, but I'll and do things I'll too. Say I like know I'm this now, I get but I'm so also doing angry. It. You know me. I just I get so fed mm. up with this bullshit, Mason. I really do. I yeah, just so you need me. I'm like the I'm like the human equivalent of a blood pressure tablet. Yeah, you are. Mm. You really are. You see, between the three of us, I feel between. Uh, excuse me. Let me amend that. Between the two of you, I feel like there's just enough gravity and tethers to keep me on the ground. <laughs> or like, or like one of those, um, one of those dogs that they train to come and lay on you if they sense that your blood pressure is getting too high. <laughs> yeah, one of the Mason. dogs that calls an ambulance when you're having a fit. <laughs> Mason is my uh, Mason is my comfort Boston Terrier. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah, the little terrier with a nice little pudgy belly that comes and lies on your lap, and you're like, oh, oh but not, not a Boston Terrier though. I picture I picture Mason if he if Mason was a dog, he'd have long and sh 
he's like a, more like a Yorkshire Terrier, mm -hmm. but like crossbred with something. So he's a little bit bigger, like, uh, like maybe he's crossbred with like a Basset Hound. 